I am so excited to be here. I am so honored. I just want to say a big hallelujah. Can you join me and say that? Oh, no, we know we can do better than that. Forget the guests. Let's say a big hallelujah. Yes. This is our groundbreaking. This is our groundbreaking. Amen. My name is Viola Brumskin, and I am in charge of the capital campaign that we're calling Invest Beyond. And in this phase of our capital campaign, like you have heard, the theme is arise and build, because we are ready to build. Are you ready to build? Are you ready to build? Amen. My work here is very simple. Bishop came, ran through all my notes, and I was like, there is a living God. I need to leave the book of Nehemiah, stand here, and explain to you what you will do to partner with us. You know, Bishop said that this is a good work. This is a great work. And this is God's work. So just say that after me. Good work. Great work. God's work. Now, to catch the vision of investing beyond. I want to live us with three things. To embrace the good work, the great work, and the God's work of the hour. I want to live you with three things. So that it's not a sermon. So that it's not just in your notes. So that it's something you take with you. The first thing I want to say, if you are to catch the vision of investing beyond, you are to understand that your life is to be lived out for more than just your life. That you must understand that we have to see beyond our lifetimes. We have to live our lives as lives that are invested beyond. And what does that mean? We are to be people who are conscious that our very mission on the earth is to lay foundation for others who are coming. That's why we are here. Let me tell you something that might not have been evident throughout today. Let me remind some of us of something. You see, in 1990, in August, on a day maybe just like this one, a couple with two suitcases worth of luggage found themselves stranded in the United States. That couple is Bishop Johnson and Lady Chris. They had come to the U.S. for a conference. Now, let me just let you know, just so you have the right picture. They were educated in the United States, had a call for planting a church, and went home to Liberia, just so you don't get the story twisted. And they found themselves in the U.S. for a conference, supposed to be here maybe two weeks. And then the Civil War broke out in Liberia. And in seeking God, in praying and asking God, what should we do? Our church is a thriving church in Liberia. Here we are, no flights back. Everything erupted. God said to them, be a missionary and not a refugee. Now, those are words that if you're part of our church, you can get familiar with. But I want to urge you, never get familiar with that instruction. In the seed of that instruction was us as a harvest for that word. When the Lord said to them, do not be a refugee, be a missionary. He was asking them to see something I want to draw your attention to. He was asking them to see in themselves the seed, the foundation for many generations. That's the DNA of our church. And when they planted that church, they met at Howard University that day in August. There were 17 people. Now, Pastor Varney didn't introduce himself, but Pastor Varney Taylor was one of the 17 that were there that day. He was much younger, and of course, he was with his parents. And there are so many others. Uh, there's, there's Chief Steve, Steve Kai and his family, uh, who, uh, who at that time, I think Dr. Stella Jeffries was also a girl. And there are many others. In them, 
that day was us as the harvest because of the obedience of do not be a refugee, be a missionary. Inside of you is the foundation for many generations. That is our DNA. Our DNA is the DNA of a people who are called to do a good work, who are called to do a great work, who are called to do God's work. Amen. So number one, we got to live our lives beyond our lifetimes. And so like I said, Bishop touched on that. When we are asking you to pledge, we're asking you to remember that your life is to be lived beyond your lifetime. The second thing I want to remind you before I tell you how to pledge is that when this kind of charge comes along, Everybody must refine their values. You know, for a person to rise up and give $50,000 in a year towards building a building, that person must assign some degree of value to the building that is being built. And in fact, I dare submit to you, they must see beyond a physical building to give that kind of money. And Bishop has told you that it's a good work, it's a great work, it's God's work, and we know there is no value we can assign to God's work. There's no value we can assign to God's work that is a good work and that is a great work. But you got to refine your values. So maybe you're not given 50000 Maybe you're not given 25000 Maybe you can only give 1000 for this next phase. But you must assign the value, the worth you place on the good, great God's work we are about to do. And so I'm going to ask you to think about refining your values, refocusing your values. The value of your time, the value of your treasure, the value of your talent. The third thing and the last thing. To catch the vision of investing beyond. To catch that vision. We have to catch the vision of raising up others that will replace us. You know, it is said that if you are a success and you have no successor, you are a failure. If you are a leader and there is no leader better than you after you've left, sorry, you are not a leader. And this applies to you if you're leading up a department in this church. It applies to you on your jobs. We have to embrace the tasks before us, thinking about what comes after us when we are not there. Bishop touched on that. I just want to remind us. As we consider reaching into our treasure to sow up seed for the next sanctuary, for the next cathedral, I want to encourage all of us who have caught the vision to make it a point to raise up others who will catch the vision as well. It is critical, it's important, and it's biblical. Our faith runs like a relay race. If you don't catch the baton, you have nothing to give. If you don't receive, you have nothing to give. But we all have received. And we have received because of others who went ahead of us. We have received because of others who made an investment. I know sometimes in church we say sacrificial giving. I argue that it's not a sacrifice because there is a reward. It's an investment. Now, you know, in, in terms of investments, if it's short term, medium term, long term, there's different kinds of rewards. What we are asking you to do today is some long term investing. It's some long term investing. What we are asking you today is to take a minute, pause, think about your values. Remember that there is a generation that invested to bring you here and that you have a duty to respond by investing in the generations to come. Amen. So what do you see? What do you see? 
When Abraham was complaining to the Lord about his heir, God said to him, come, 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 come outside. Lift up your head. Behold the expanse of the heaven. See the stars. Number them if you can. That is how your seed can be. So God realized that Abraham had the problem of vision. I want to say to us, if you're challenged in any way, the problem might be vision. So, I want to ask you, what do you see? Beyond the good work, beyond the great work, beyond the God work, what do you see? Beyond the cathedral, what do you see? Your response is going to be according to what you see. And now beyond that, how do you see yourself in what you see? So remember, the church was birthed with a call. Be a missionary, not a refugee. God was saying to Bishop and Lady Chris, come outside your tent. Look up. See the stars. Number them if you can. That is what I have for you. You're crying about a civil war. You're crying about a little church you've left. You're crying about your little house. Come outside. Look up. What do you see? And the church that was birthed was called Bethel World Outreach. There's people from every nation. There's people from every tongue. There is people from every continent apart from one represented under that banner. What do you see? I want to tell you what I see. We're entering phase two. It's site development. Mr. Yuri has told you a little bit about it. Bishop has told you a little bit about it. It's going to cost us $1.8 million. We have about $500,000 left in our account. We're trying to raise a million dollars. Nothing much, not a heavy lift, but we've never raised a million dollars in 12 months. In fact, we raised 1.2 in about three and a half to four years. And so now at the cusp of this new journey the Lord is taking us on, the question for each of us is what do you see? I want you to see a few things. I want you to see us as harvesters being able to raise a million dollars in 12 months. Amen? I want you to see us being able to meet all our pledges and redeem them. I want you to see us arising and building and not stopping till the cathedral is built. Can I hear an amen? That's what I want you to see. I want you to see that because it's to the dimension you can see that you can believe and that you can act in obedience. I want you to see that God is releasing to many of us new streams of income. Hallelujah, to meet the desires of our heart to partner with this. I want you to see among us people with global brands, global businesses. I want you to see that we expand to the left. We expand to the right. We expand to the north. We expand to the south. Because we say yes to doing God's work, God's great work, God's good work. I see the doors of that cathedral. And I see myself in it. And I'm happy to tell my son. (laughs) I'm happy to tell my sons. I'm happy to tell them. That is my gift to you and your generation. Because a group of people had the audacity to believe in a God. That was willing to help them. That was willing to favor them. That was willing to do great things through them. Do you see like I see? Do you see what I see? Do you see beyond what I'm seeing? Then let me say, here you say yes. All right. How does that translate? If I have my slide up. For this phase of our campaign, we want to raise a million dollars. And there's going to be seven pledge categories. Do we have it up? I can't see it, so just shake your head and let me know. Perfect. And the reality is, based on our calculation, it will only take 304 people pledging to get to $1 million. 
If we have four couples, four people in the church pledge at the $50,000 level, if we have uh, 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 people pledge at the $25,000, $10,000 level, we can do it. Now, I want to just say to you, the only way you can know for sure that we are on track to doing this is if you are part. This is not for the brother on your left and the sister on your right. I'm talking to you. The only way you can ensure that this happens is if you do your part. And that's really easy. For the first time, we've set up an electronic pledge system. All you need to do, if you find or if you don't find any of these levels possible, all you need to do is text the word pledge. P-L-E-D-G-E. -E, pledge. And text it to the church number. It takes you less than 30 seconds. Very easy. Put an amount you're believing God to bless this good, great God's work through you. Put an amount in there. Hopefully it's one of the seven levels, but it doesn't have to be. Now, we have some guests here today. I'm just so thankful for your presence here. You don't have to pledge if you don't want to, but we are welcoming one-time gifts. And if you would like to give a one-time gift, you just need to text the word G-I-V-E to the same number that was on your screen, 301-588-8099, and you can make a donation towards this campaign. I just want to leave you with this. My time is up. I see us are people who might have considered themselves no people. Two immigrants, hearing this word, not knowing what to do, meeting at Blackburn Auditorium, and the audacity to believe that they were going to be a world outreach ministry. Had nothing, quote unquote, knew no one. We're going from place to place to place to place. And I told Bishop on a personal level, reviewing our history has so charged me up. I was not there in 1990. In 1990, I wasn't even 10 years old. I wasn't there in 1990. I wasn't there in 97. I wasn't there in 2001. I wasn't there when those exploits were being done. But that's the DNA of which I'm a part of. And it stirs my faith to a new level. It makes me know I am born and I am targeted for great accomplishments for the kingdom. That is your portion in this work. So, this was meant to inspire you. This was meant to encourage you to be a part of this. Some people say, why pledge? And I say to those, it is a step of faith. It is an act of faith. You are declaring what you want the Lord to do through you for this good work, this great work, this God's work. And may God bless you all, even as he prospers us as we arise and build. God bless you.